So God the Father, He gave to His Son, Jesus Christ, as a gift, all individuals who will ever choose of their own volition to come to Jesus in the sense of believing in Him of their own volition. They're not robots for eternal life. <clears throat> How did God know? He called. He drew. He persuaded. We chose. Others are not called. But they have every opportunity to believe. And there's a lot of persuasion involved in that too. But not that special drawing. <clears throat> Think about how grateful you should be. God called you. And the destiny of you is of your own volition as a result of God calling you. But you didn't get made into a robot. So God the Father gave to His Son Jesus Christ as a gift to all individuals who will ever choose to come to Jesus in the sense of believing in Him for eternal life. <clears throat> and all who come by faith to Him, He will never cast out in the sense of never denying them eternal life, no matter how poorly they behave. You behave badly enough, He'll take you home early. He'll kill you, take you home. And then you'll face the rest of eternity. The joy that you could have had will be gone because you didn't serve Him faithfully and suffer for Him as a result. Here are some of the verses that are key in this passage. Take a look at the passage itself and read it. John 6, 14, but I'm not going to read all those verses. It'll provide too much context. Let's just stick with the context at hand. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me shall never hunger. And the one who, the one who believes in him shall never thirst. <coughs> and me shall never thirst. So believing is figurative. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, drinking, having thirst, and drinking of him is figurative for believing in him. And the one who eats the bread of life is figurative for believing in him. So that's all you have to do. John 6, 36, but I said to you that you have also have seen me, and you will believe, and you believe not. Talking about the, the Jews who rejected him and wanted to kill him. They were kind of faking, believing in the crowd, you know. Uh, all the crowds going with them, the miracles, the feeding of 5,000 or plus more, and, and all they're hanging around, just looking for an excuse to kill him. All that the Father gives to me, Jesus said to them, who hated him and wanted to kill him, will come to me by faith. And whoever comes to me, literally the, literally the ones, the coming ones to me, I will never drive away, never cast out. The phrase rendered comes to me in John 6, 36, 37, continues. The figure of speech for a moment of faith alone in Jesus Christ alone, resulting in eternal life. Established in verse 35. See, if you read this whole passage, a lot of people just select verses out of it. You don't get the context. You never get the context by just spot reading. I, I love people that love to do that. Maybe they've read it enough times and they have good memories, but you can't get an idea of the context without reading the whole thing. By this, Jesus continues his train of thought on who will secure eternal life by stipulating all that the Father gives me will come to me. In John 6, 37, implying God's sovereign choosing of certain individuals who will then choose to come to faith in Jesus unto eternal life. The word gift is implied by the verb rendered gives. In the phrase rendered all that the Father gives me, it implies that God has evidently made provision for a number of chosen individuals to come to his Son by faith unto eternal life. The number is all. All who are chosen, elected. Now all men are given the opportunity to believe. And they all will go their own way unless chosen. <clears throat> and that chosen is a persuasion. God chose them and persuaded them and they went and chose of their own volition to believe. So John 6.44 of 640, 665 will indicate that God has made, indeed made provision for certain individuals such that they are drawn by him, John 644, and enabled by him, John 665. You're enabled to believe, but believing is still volitional. Remember that. Now, um, the Calvinist will say, well, 
you know, you've been made into a robot believer or a robot uh, not believer. Uh, you've been chosen, so you, you're born again. So you're forced into being born again, and then you'll choose. No, that's actually the out of order. It's as many as received him. Receive means believe in him. As many as received him, that is to say, to those that believed in him, should choose to trust in his name and have be become born of God. So you receive him by believing him, in him. And then you become born of God. You don't get forced to be born of God. And then because of you got this click in the back of your head, changing your mind from being rebellious to accept everything God has given you to do. No, you choose of your own free volition. And when you get in your resurrection body, you're still not a robot. You still choose whatever you want to do, and it'll be perfect. Because the only thing you, God will disallow you from doing is doing evil. So why not have that taken out of you? It's self-destructive anyway. <clears throat> John 6, and 65, therefore, will indicate that God has made, indeed made provision for certain individuals such that they are drawn by him. John 6, 44, and enabled by him. John 6, 65, to choose to come to Jesus, his son, by faith, such that these individuals are stipulated as God's gift to his son. Thus, to make this a true gift, there cannot be anyone outside of this elect group of individuals who might come to Jesus by faith on their own without God. And none will. Because they don't want to. Until God says, come on, come on, let me tell you about my son. Look how glorious it will be to be born again. Just choose to believe, choose my son. Otherwise, individuals could claim to come to Jesus without God's help. But Scripture says that all who come to, to faith in Jesus are part of God's gift to His Son, giving God all the glory. Now, would you want anybody else in charge in the universe? Yeah, let the devil in. Let some other people who don't want to choose to believe, let them come along too. That's why the world is the way it is now. Don't let. God gave man and the demonic world, the choice. So the phrase, all that the Father gives me will come to me by faith, has the entire population of those who believe throughout history in view. The second half of the verse says, and whoever comes to me, literally the coming ones to me, I will never drive away, never cast out. So the words, umi, ume, double negative, in the phrase, ume ek, Balo, literally, I will never cast out, are an emphatic double negative in the Greek. They picture the internally secure position a believer has with Jesus relative to eternal life. He will never cast the believer out of himself, nor himself out of the believer. That's emphatic. That's why I put it in italics and underlined it. On the other hand, some maintain that a believer could choose to cast himself out of eternal life by unfaithfulness of some kind. I've heard this. Oh, boy. That makes God a little bit less than sovereign, doesn't it? We're in control. But Psalm 637 makes it clear that the only one who has the capacity to grant or deny eternal life is God himself, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Man is not stipulated in Scripture as having the capacity to grant or cancel his own eternal life. But all men do have the capacity to choose to believe of their own volition in God's Son for eternal life. Now what happens when you get really bad? You're going home early. And it's not going to be a pleasant death. But you'll be in his Son, a wayward Son, not being able to serve him for the rest of eternity all that well. And you'll be really sad about that for a thousand years. Don't do that. Matthew 22. Many are called, few are chosen. Many, all believers are called. Few are chosen. Ek, lego. Chosen out of. Ek meaning out. Really out. Really chosen to be faithful. And then we who are chosen to be really faithful will choose to be really faithful of our own volition. That's marvelous. God doesn't override your will. 
but he persuades you <clears throat> to do beyond <coughs> what you would have done had you, he had not called you. So compare John three fifteen to 16, which support this point, especially since these verses contain the phrase rendered, For God so loved the world. Then he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him, whosoever is the believing one in him, should never perish, ever perish, but have eternal life. Implying that all mankind has the Son's payment for sins because God so loved the world. Spe specifically made for all men of all ages since the beginning and the phrase rendered so that whoever believes, whoever is the believing one, pa, ho, pistorion, whoever, pa, ho, the, whoever the believing one, it's a noun, not a verb, that means in an instant you become the believing one, and what should you do? You should never, should never, should, maybe you will, maybe you won't, no, God's so perfect and so sovereign, and so absolute, that he's the one that's responsible whether or not you get the results, and he, being totally reliable, will give you eternal life. You'll never perish, and you will have everlasting life. When you have everlasting life, you want to stop believing? Be my guest. I stop believing all the time. I took a nap for about 30 minutes just a while ago. I don't know what I was believing or not. That doesn't mean I'm not a believer anymore. Notice that Jesus is claiming to have the authority and power of God over every individual's eternal destiny, a capacity exclusive to God, which he claimed in his testimony to the crowd. Point B. Jesus once more declared to the Jews that he had come down from heaven. <clears throat> the Jews that were fighting him and wanting to kill him and finding him, see if he makes one mistake. Stones in their pockets. Jesus once more declared to the Jews that he had come down from heaven not to do his own will, but to do the will of his Father who sent him, to see to it that all that, that the Father had given to him, all who will see him, in the sense of being presented with the truth about him, I see that, you know, who chose, who choose to express a moment of faith alone, in him alone, unto eternal life, he will not lose, but raise them all, not lose one, but raise them all upon the last day to everlasting life. <clears throat> now they already have everlasting life within them. I just told the guy that today. You have your physical life, where is it in you? In your ear? In your nose? In your eyeball? What? Underneath your hat? No. Your physical life, it's an intrinsic part of all of you. That's why I'm moving my hands, my nose, my mouth, my ears. If I can move my ears. Uh, what about eternal life? Eternal life, once you believe, it says, have, present tense, eternal life. Where is it in you? Nah, it's not in your spirit. You have possession, intrinsic possession of eternal life throughout your physical body. And God will transform that possession into a perfect physical resurrection body. And all you want to do is the great things that will give you the greatest joy. Not the evil joys. The greatest joys. The godly ones. Don't even compare the evil joys. They become self-destructive. For And here is John 6, 38. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me, literally, literally the one having sent me. And this is the will of the Father who sent me. And all that he has given me to me, I may not choose of it, but I may raise it up at the last day, raise him up at the last day, us. And this is the will of him who sent me, alternate of my Father. So, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. John chapter 6 has the gospel. I counted, I think, 12 times. Some figurative, some directly. How do you miss that? How do you add to that? Come on. He didn't say anything else but simply believe. On the bread of life, you eat me, you, meaning you believe. Thirst, you believe. So Jesus once more declared to the Jews that he had come down from heaven not to do his own will, but to do the will of his Father and who sent him, to see to it that all the Father had given him, all who will see him in the sense of being presented with the truth about him, will, who choose to express a moment of faith alone in him alone unto to turn life, he will not lose, but raise them all up on the last day to everlasting life. More on this next time.